All right, today we are going to talk about commas and apostrophes. So these two little wonderful pieces of punctuation look very similar to each other, except for where they are located in relation to uh, the letters in a sentence. So a comma is this little guy down here, and it's always at the bottom of a line, whereas an apostrophe looks just like a comma, but it's at the top. And they have, ex they have very different functions, and uh, we're going to walk through sort of some simple rules with each one and, and what their role is in punctuation. So the most simple thing I'm going to focus on with commas is two simple rules. One of them is that commas can be used to separate items in a list of three or more things. So for example, if I say, I brought my shoes, pants, and shirt to work today. That's three things and it's sort of a mouthful to spit it out. And when we don't use commas to cause a pause between each of these items, longer sentences can get quite difficult to say. So with these commas in place, I actually read it as, I brought my shoes, pants, and shirt to work today. Instead of, I brought my shoes, pants, and shirt to work today, it's, I brought my shoes, pause, pants, pause, and shirt to work today. So, when we're separating these three items, shoes, pants, and shirt, we stick a comma between each one to create a short pause and spread out the list a little bit. Now the second function is that commas can be used to separate a subject from a description of that subject. So remember a noun is usually the subject of our sentence, so in this case Kevin is the subject. But what do we want to add about Kevin that is going to be interesting to our reader or relevant to our reader? Well, he's the English teacher. So we're going to say Kevin, comma, the English teacher, comma, gave us homework. It's not Kevin the English teacher gave us homework. It's Kevin the English teacher gave us homework. You need those commas in there to separate the description from the subject being described. So separating items in a list and separating the description of a subject from that subject. Those are the two simple rules that we are going to focus on for comma usage. Remember, you can't just stick a comma between two sentences because that creates an error we've already discussed in the past, which is a run-on sentence or comma splice in particular. So here's some examples. The pizza tasted awful because the thin crust, stale cheese, anchovies, and sauce. When I have these, without these commas here, I'm not able to actually pause in between. So it's the pizza tastes awful because of the thin crust, stale cheese, anchovies, and sauce. Rather, when I have these commas in here, it reads, the pizza tasted awful because of the thin crust, stale cheese, anchovies, and sauce. It gives your reader moments to pause, to take in all the information you're trying to send to them. So for example, to Stephen, comma, the magician, comma, showed us his best trick. It's not Stephen the magician showed us his best trick. Now I know I'm exaggerating a bit there with the speed, but that's what it starts to read like when you have a bunch of sentences that don't use any commas. So it reads Stephen, the magician showed us his best trick. We've separated the descriptor of Stephen from Stephen himself to emphasize that piece of information. We went to the store and grabbed all the pot they had. That actually works perfectly fine. You could say we went to the store, comma, and grabbed all the pot they had. But it actually works to just say because there's, there's not more than two things in this list, things that happened. We went to the store and grabbed all the pop they had. So that's your basic rules for commas. One, commas can be used to separate items of three or more in a list, and commas can be used to separate a subject from a description of that subject. Now we have apostrophes. Apostrophes are very different than commas, but they have two main functions. One, they're used to join two words together to create what's called a contraction. A contraction is when you take two words, put them together, and it makes one word. So the words do not can be combined to make the word don't. And we do that by getting rid of this O and popping a, an apostrophe right in there. We can't leave the apostrophe out and just have D-O-N-T. It's not grammatically correct. That apostrophe has to replace the letter we take out. So he is, for example, becomes he's. They are becomes there. And we are becomes we're. So you're noticing we've gotten rid of an O, we've gotten rid of an I, We've gotten rid of an A, and we've gotten rid of an A. A and I and O, those are all vowels. So generally with an apostrophe and a contraction, you're taking a vowel out. The second thing that they can be used for is to show possession. And this is generally the trickiest rule for people to get. 
Possession is when something belongs to something else. So if the possession is singular, meaning there's only one thing, you use apostrophe s. So the apostrophe goes on the inside of the s. If the possession is plural, meaning more than one person or thing owns what we're talking about, we're going to put, we're going to put the apostrophe on the outside. Here's some examples. That's Irma's Gatorade. So the Gatorade belongs to Irma. So we have to say apostrophe s. There's just one Irma, singular. As it's singular, you put apostrophe s. We need to show that the Gatorade belongs to her. Therefore, we put an apostrophe. It's not Irma's without an apostrophe. That's just more than one Irma. When we just have an s at the end without an apostrophe, we've just made a word plural or more than one. So here we go. This is the student's classroom. So that's one student, and that is his or her classroom. Just a single student. And we know it's a single student because it's apostrophe s, just like up here, apostrophe s, singular. We can do something different that actually changes the complete uh, description of the sentence by putting the apostrophe after the s. And now we've made it plural, and it's the, the classroom that belongs to all the students. So there's two functions here. It's you as a writer need to decide what it is that you're saying and use the appropriate punctuation so that your reader can read it correctly. If a reader reads, this is the student's classroom, they know it's more than, or it's one student because it's apostrophe S. If they read, this is the student's classroom with the apostrophe on the outside, then all of a sudden they know that is more than one student. She buried her dog's bones. So it's not her single dog, it's all of her dog's bones. And you can see the apostrophe comes after the S. That indicates if the possession is plural. So you've got some examples here. Why didn't she steal all of her sister's clothes? Singular. I want you to correct that sentence to be singular. So pause the video, take a moment and try and correct it. Watch as I correct this sentence. First of all, we need an apostrophe there. Why didn't did not, we need to add the apostrophe to create a contraction. Why didn't she steal all of her sister's clothes? Okay, the clothes belong to someone. Is it her sister or a bunch of sisters? Well, I've told you here I wanted it to be singular, which means one sister, which means that apostrophe has to go before the S. Now we've got, why didn't she steal all of her sister's clothes? That is correct. Second one is, she didn't want to face her parents' wrath if she got caught. Now this is plural. So the wrath belongs to her parents, and plural means more than one, and if it's plural, the apostrophe comes after the S, therefore it becomes parents' wrath. So commas, just to review, can be used to separate an item in, uh, three or more items in a list. They can also be used to separate a subject from a description of that subject. Whereas apostrophes, two functions are, they join two words together to create a contraction, and they show possession, with the apostrophe coming before the S when it's singular, and after the S when it's plural.